guys, welcome back to another video of Ant Will Plays. Today we're playing Open Heart Third Year, Book 3, Chapter 15. Let's begin. Painful secrets from the past are brought to light as you're, you face a major day in court. Oh yeah, Ethan's thing. Ethan's court thing. I think we got one more chapter. I think the final chapter is like this week, probably. <gasps> Excuse me. Chapter 15, Day in Court. That's what it's called. You stand at the bar, still thunderstruck by what you overheard from the other doctors. They think it was Naveen who deserves to be brought up over malpractice. What actually happened that day? A plan starts formulating in your mind, and you'll need backup. Jackie, I know this is sudden, but can you come back to the hospital with me? Again, it's about Ethan's malpractice suit. I need someone to come to the records room and help me find a specific file. Lead the way. You know I'm always willing to help you out, Naveen. Just know that you are now deeply in my debt. Thanks, Jackie. You're the best. This is the record room. You arrive in the desert in the deserted records room in Ethan's basement in Eden Brooks' basement. Sorry. This late at night. There's no one. One on duty, so the two of you are. You are the only ones there. Boy, that's a lot of charts to go through. Thanks for your help. I'd never be able to get through all this by myself. Hey, what are friends for? Besides, this isn't our time so rambling these archives. Now, what do you want me to look for? I'm looking for the charts for Anika Grover, a patient from about 10 years ago. It's this case, it's the case that Ethan's being sued over. That narrows it down a bit. What exactly are you expecting to find in, on the in the on the chart? I'm not sure exactly. I'm not entirely sure, but I know it won't be what I expect. Do you, you take different aisles and start searching for the file in the question? There are thousands of files organized by year, department by some alphabetical, also all mixed up, but suddenly. Boom, Anika Grover. I knew I could find it. I take the file record and start flipping through it. Let's see, Anika was admitted with fever, chest, and joint pain, and headaches. Upon ibuprofen to manage her symptoms. Looks like the team diagnosed aspergillus poisoning and prescribed voriconazole antifungal treatment with wait what they started vor blah while she was still on the ibuprofen what but there's a un, there's a known contract contraindication there every internist knows that no wonder they had to retract whoever signed off on starting the vor would be at fault then. Wait, why would Ethan sign off on the Varaconazole treatment? There's no way he's the one who ordered this. You look through the rest of the chart, sure enough, Ethan only signed for the final treatments. Everything else is signed for by a very scribbly, very familiar signature. Your heart sinks. I need to talk to Ethan now. Do you head to the diagnosis office and sign? You sigh heavily, dropping the chart on the table. Thank you. I mean it. I don't think I that think I managed without you along. Any time, Anthony. Do you want me to stay with you until Ethan gets here? No, I paged him, so he should only be a few minutes, and I feel like I need some time to clear my head before I talk to him. Well, maybe this will 
help clear your head. She bends forward and kisses you briefly but passionately on the lips. And she pulls away, she's smiling, and you find you, and you are too. I didn't exactly clear my head, but it did help. A lot. Good luck, Anthony. And call me if you need me. Give me giving you one last peck for the road, she turns and heads out, leaving you alone in the office. It's not long before Ethan shows up in the office. I see you're willing to go to the same lanes I'm trying I am to escape the boring party. Ethan, it's not up for jokes right now. We need to talk. Wordless, you've put the file on the desk between you and push forward or him push it towards him. He immediately pales, he recognizes it, and you both know the story it tells. Ready to explain this? I'm not certain it's my place to explain. While your signature is on the chart, in the in the one place I thought it would be, it would be thought I thought it wouldn't be. So if it's not your place to explain it, whose is it? Come on, Ethan, we've we played it your way. Now I think it's time to come clean about this. He sighs and you take a note of surrender in it. What precisely would you like me to clarify? Naveen is the one who signed off on the, the N S A I D S. He had to know he sh she code if he put her on the but from the gossip I've heard, I'm guessing Naveen pawned the trash and ordered the thing that caused her to code in the first place. He could have known that might make her code, I think. You signed this to cover for him. Ethan hesitates and sighs. Yes, Naveen was the one who ordered the... Which triggered the... Uh, but if he approved both of the drugs and performed the, performed the botch trash, this is 100% on Naveen. You had nothing to do with it. So why is your name on the chart, Ethan? Why did you sign off on something that wasn't your fault? It's difficult to explain. This case was complicated in every sense of the word. Then make it clear to me, Ethan, help me understand what happened that day. Near the start of my residency, Naveen's sister passed away. It was very sudden, very painful, caused her caused by in her workplace. You know how fast can progress and how agonizing it is? They were very close, best friends, really. Her death was extremely painful. Poor Naveen. Indeed, he tried to bury himself to have in work. To deal with the grief, but he was distracted, Make, made mistakes he never would have otherwise. I'm guessing one of those mistakes was ordering the contrain treatments. Yes, the entire team agreed on high doses of ibuprofen shortly after her arrival to help with her pain. Naveen must have simply forgotten the discussion after all. It's an all-over-the-counter drug, and reactions like hers are are rare. Ethan shakes his head, clearly troubled by the memory. In Nika's case, it was a wake-up call for Naveen. He realized if he kept going like he had been, someone might have might be real might be hurt, really hurt. I'll never forget how he looked that night. He was so shaken, it was the first time I'd re really seen him scared. So you signed your name to into the chart to protect your mentor, even though Naveen was the one responsible for all of it. I did. And I regr never regretted it. After that, he took time to clear his head. When he came back, he was his old self. 
if anything, more careful. To have Naveen back to his old self, I imagine it must have felt like a worthwhile sacrifice. Now in regards to the patient, if I'd said something sooner, perhaps he'd never have damaged her. Yeah. But as for myself, it wasn't much of a sacrifice until now, at least. Guys, if you've been following, if you guys have been watching my, watching me play through the open heart series on choices you would know you should know by now that some of the words that these guys say are hard for me to pronounce so i just say blah and blah so anyway let's continue but how could naveen let you let you take such a massive massive risk for him it doesn't seem at all like the man i know naveen didn't let me take the fall for him the fact is he never knew what i did Wait, what? But how is that? Anthony, you know from experience by now. Sometimes you got get behind on your charts. Sometimes you mix them up. No one remembers whether they signed off on every single IV or antibiotic. Not even Naveen. So, he never realized what you'd done. And you never told him. And how it... And now it's all caught up to you. I knew then the possible consequences of my decision. I stand by it. If it means there's a price to pay, then I can accept that. But you're being sued for something that isn't your fault. In a way, it was my fault. M mine and the team's. We all should have seen that Naveen wasn't himself, and something would slip eventually. Staying silent was just as much much an unforced error as the medication mixed up he made it's only right that i res take responsibility for it but ethan that's not fair to the team or naveen or my mind is made up and i'm prepared to deal with whatever's coming this way from this i suggest you try to do the same with that he turns on his on his heels stalking out of the diagnostic office and, and leaving you in a whirlwind of troubled emotions that night, you, you toss and turn in your bed, unable to sleep, replaying the events of the day over and over, remembering what Ethan said and what he didn't say. Ethan's whole career, whole reputation could be in jeopardy, just so Naveen can remain pristine, and Naveen doesn't even know. There's a sudden, loud sound of scratching claws at the foot of your bed, Followed by two sudden weights leaping on your feet. Oh, so that's where you've been hiding in my room. You've been hiding in my room. Come here. I reach down and pick up Andy first, then Furball, gathering them to your chest to snuggle. As you turned your head, you noticed of the third member of the trio. Mitch crawling on your bedside table. Alright, you too. Soon you're surrounded by a s snuggly, furry, and scaly friends. Feeling soothed, you turn your mind back on the problem. Ethan wants to keep this quiet, but surely there's something he can help do to help. You start to turn, an idea begins to pre percolate. Just after dawn, you grab your phone, dialing a familiar number. Hello, Naveen? This is Anthony. We need to talk. I really hope this doesn't go bad. Oh, hey, it's the house from It Lives Beneath. Yeah, I remember that. When you arrive at Naveen's house, he's already waiting for you on the deck by the lake. Sitting beneath the table, groaning with coffee and warm pastries. Oh, you didn't have to do all that. I imagine you didn't have much time for breakfast this early. Which begs the question, to what do I owe this little pleasure? 
It's about Ethan and you. You tell Naveen everything, everything Ethan told you, you about Naveen's struggles at work, about his nearly fatal mistake, about how Ethan chose to cover for him secretly. By the time you're finished, Naveen looks ashen. I'm not sure it's totally true, but that's what Ethan told me. He'd probably be furious. I even mentioned this to you. I see. And yet you came, came to me anyway. I care about Ethan a lot, both as a mentor and as a friend. The idea that Ethan could lose his career over something he didn't even do, it's just not something I can accept. Naveen goes, his eyes go distant for a minute. When he speaks again, his voice is low and shaky. I appreciate your honesty, but the truth is, Ethan didn't tell you the most important part. I was distracted by my grief. I was relying on some very unhealthy and dangerous coping mechanisms. You mean I was drinking too much, sometimes far, some far, far too near the start of the sh of a shift. I've no doubt my judgment was clouded. Ethan didn't say anything about that. I'm not surprised. Even now, he's trying to protect. And to protect not just my career but my dignity, no matter the cost. So what you're going? So what are you going to do? Not sure. So much is at stake for Ethan, as much as me. I need time to think. We're out of time. His trial is today. I have to testify to this afternoon. Yes, I know. I was planning to attend to offer my support, but Ethan asked me not to, not to, so I wouldn't get blow back from Blue. Now I realize he was still tr hoping to hide this from me. I have to think long and hard for what to do next. Sighing, you leave Naveen alone by the lakeside, musing sadly as he looks out over the water. Back at the apartment, you prepare for Ethan's big day in your court, looking over the contents of your wardrobe. So much is at stake for Ethan in the hospital. I need to make sure I'm making the right impression. I just want to assure the judge and the attorneys t who's taking me seriously. You arrive at the courtroom to find it packed with doctors, hospital staff, and other onlookers. You make a beeline for Ethan who's sitting with his attorney. Anthony, good, you're here. I'm here now. This is my attorney, Laura Whitman. His attorney smiles at you warmly and shakes your hand with a firm touch. Thank you, Dr. Williams, for coming. Thank you, Dr. W thank you for coming today, Dr. Williams. And thank you for making s such an effort to look professional. It might well sway the jury. As it happens, Anthony is always professional, regardless what he wears. But his expression softens into a smile as he looks up, looks you up and down. But I very much appreciate the effort. I'm sure Laura's right. It can only help my, my cause. Ethan, can I speak with you privately for a moment? Raising his eyebrows and glances at his lawyer and nods with she withdraws to a discreet distance and you turn to him and speak in a low voice. I went and spoke to Naveen this morning. He revealed a certain detail you neglected to mention. I didn't want you to speak to him. I told you I didn't want him involved. He deserves to know, Ethan. He can make his own choices and whether he wants to get involved or not. For what it's worth At least tell you. No, I'm not telling her, and that's final. But Ethan, it's her job to know about the case. She needs that information so she can help you. Yes, it's her job to help me, which would mean she'd be obligated to expose e Rose Naveen if she thought it might achieve that goal. 
I can't risk it. I'd rather she not know, rather than order her to stay quiet and watch, only for her to save my save me against my will. I am not letting what happened with Naveen come anywhere near this case, and that is final. That's my ch That's my choice, and no one else's. Alright, just please think this through, Ethan, and good luck. You leave him to confer with his lawyer and head back into the gallery to find a spot to sit. You soon see Tobias and Harper waving you over across the crowd. We saved a spot for you. We figured the team should stick together. Besides, I imagine it must be nerve-wracking to wait for your time f on the stand. You're not wrong. Well, at least you don't look nervous in that assemble. You look about ready to take on the world. Spice is right. I've always found that I feel more confident when I dress well. And I, I have to imagine that's true of you right now. I didn't realize you'd be here today. I'm here for moral support. Ethan is a dear friend. And I feel like he could use all the friends he has right now. And I actually have I've been called to testify. Character witness, I believe. Really? Ethan's legal team really chose you as a character witness? Actually, I'm being called as a witness for the plaintiff. Why? What information do they think you can offer? It's not like you were there when it happened. Whether you, whether, well, neither were you, to be fair. I imagine we're both being called for the same reason to give insight into Ethan's ethics and character. But if you're being called by the plaintiff, they must think you'll only have bad things to say. I'll only... I'll only have honest things to say beyond that. There's no point in getting stressed about it before the questions get asked. Sighing, you look around the courtroom when you see Lee and Broom toward the back, conferring with an anxious looking young woman. Watching Ethan suffer must be like a day at the theater for him. If this goes badly, he'll have an excuse to fire Ethan altogether. Moments later, Bloom finishes his conversation, and to your shock, the woman walks to the plaintiff's table at the front of the court, sitting down without hesitation. Wait, is that Anika Grover? Why was Bloom talking to her? Talking with her? For you can come with an answer. The bl the blade, the bailiff stands at the front of the front and asks everyone to rise as the judge takes a seat. All rise. Be seated. Court is now in session. Mr. Mr. Ali, you may begin. <clears throat> this case is simple. We can prove Ethan Ramsey was responsible for misdiagnosing the treatments that caused my client to go blind to code, and the injuries that she suffered as a result. The most tragic part, this was avoidable. Our experts will show her injuries to be part, to be the result of the unconscionable negligence. There seems there, the jury seems like they're buying this. Hope that's not bad news for Ethan. The quick, in quick succession, the the bit the plaintiffs. Attorney lays out the facts of the case, calling first a paramedical expert to explain the medication. It's uncommon, but ibuprofen can cause. Ugh. A person like Dr. Ramsey would absolutely have known that. 
The librarian, then the librarian who filed the original chart in the hospital records. Yes, that's definitely Dr. Ramsey's signature. I've seen it on countless charts. But normally doctors would never sign off on a procedure without checking and double checking what was prescribed before. And finally, the patient who speaks with a quiet, slightly croaky voice. Dr. Ramsey told me that they were they would help me with speech therapy referrals, but that my voice would never quite be the same again. And at the time, you accepted that. I did. I guess I figured that a raspy voice was better than dying. But recently I was able to talk things over with some people I trust. It helps me realize something I hadn't considered before. Even if I'm at peace with this, what about all the other patients? Isn't it my duty to ensure this doesn't happen to anyone else? After a brief cross-examination, the patient takes her seat again and her attorney stands. The plaintiff rests, Your Honor. In that case... Call your first witness, Miss Whitman. Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to call Dr. Anthony Williams to the stand as a character witness. Tensions rippling through you, you make your way to the stand. Dr. Williams, you've been working closely with Dr. Ramsey for the past three years. How would you prescribe him as a doctor? Hmm. Careful and compassionate. I've never met a doctor who cares about his patients more or fights harder for their well-being. Part of that is being m mythical to a fault. Dr. Ramsey always double-checks everything. He knows a mistake can hurt the patient. That's what makes him such an amazing doctor. One of the best things I've ever known. In your time of in your time working with Dr. Ramsey, have you ever seen any sign of gross negligence, cutting corners, say, or missing important case elements? Cutting corners? No. That's not how Ethan operates, and he's extremely attentive to detail. Lastly, if you had to tell the court one thing about the defendant, one thing to consider in their deliberation. What would it be? Hmm. The idea of even making a mistake like this is ludicrous. Another doctor, maybe, but Ethan's is a cut above. There's no more. There is no one more cautious and dedicated to patient care in Edinburgh. No boxer is lucky to have him. Your eyes flicker up to Bloom in the audience who appears unmoved. Then Ethan, Ethan who looks genuinely touched. I'm honored to be his mentee. You mean mentor? Oh, wait, never mind. And I hope that someday I can be even half the doctor that he w he is. Thank you, Dr. Williams. No further questions. As he sits down, as she sits down, the plaintiff attorney stands up and approaches, binding his suit jacket. Dr. Williams, you're clearly a professional in your field, and by all accounts, you have a bright career ahead of you. Yeah. I'm sure the whole court can tell you by looking at you that you're a consummate professional. Looks like this trick. Looks like the this outfit is doing the trick. So I have to ask, do you think you're truly able to be unbiased when discussing your former mentor, Dr. Ramsey? It's true that Ethan played a huge part in helping me become a doc and the doctor I am. But so have a lot of people 
I've met in the past three years, some of whom are in this room right now. As for what you're implying, I certainly wouldn't risk my career to cover for someone else, no matter what our relationship was. In that case, I'm sure you'll answer the next question, honestly. To your knowledge, Dr. Williams, did the defendant actively work to get a patient out of potentially life-saving trial this year? Well, yes, but... And to your knowledge, did he then also falsify records and break study protocol in order to get a different patient into a study? Yes, but that was a, that was different. So you admit then that he has a habit of ignoring procedure when it suits him. I wouldn't put it that put it that way. Objection, Your Honor. Battering the witness. Overruled. But I'll, but I'll ask you to come up to, to the point, Mr. Ali. Of course. <clears throat> Given what you know of Dr. Ramsey, isn't it possible he made this mistake? Look over at Ethan, thinking of all the times you've worked with him, all the things he's done in the past year. I think it's impossible. Ethan could never have done this. Not now, not ever. It's fundamentally at odds with the kind of doctor he is. What happened was tragic, but this wasn't negligence, especially not from Ethan. In your opinion, you mean? I can only give my opinion, which is based on years of knowledge of him, as both a doctor and a person. I have no further questions for this witness. Go up and get you up from the stand and you move back to your seat. As you pass by Ethan, he smiles wantonly. Wait, thank you, Anthony. I appreciate the vote of confidence. Ethan's attorney calls a few more witnesses, but soon enough, the defense rests its case as soon as Miss Whitman says things Mr. Ali springs up. Your Honor, with your permission, we would like to call Dr. Tobias Carrick as a real witness. The judge nods his approval, taking a deep breath, Tobias gets to his feet, walks to the front, and takes the stand. My beautiful witness. You must think Tobias had some some pretty things to say. Dr. Carrick, please tell please tell the court how you know the defendant. We're close friends and roommates in med school. By our residence, we had a falling out due to Dr. Ramsey's arrogance, yes? I'm sure he say I had something to do with it, too. If you're asking if Ethan was arrogant, the answer is obviously still is. We've heard about rash decisions, interference in studies. Isn't the man you know capable even likely to make a mistake like this? Tobias looks at the, at the attorney blankly, blankly, then everyone's surprised he throws his head back and starts laughing long and loud. God, no. Back in Mexico, he didn't, he knew every drug contradiction before first term, even started. There's no way he makes such an elementary mistake. If he somehow did, He'd have handed in his resignation before his swift was up. There's a brief stunned silence from both the plaintiff and the defense. So you're saying you don't think Dr. Ramsey was responsible? You can see he signed the chart, can't you? Chart makes mix ups happen all the time. Even finishing your charts is tough. Whatever happened, the error wasn't Ethan's. But I I have no further questions for this witness. Miss Ali, would you like to cross-examine this witness? Um, no, I guess not. 
The defense has no f questions. Then the witness is accused. Waiting, Tobias gets up from his seat and walks past Ethan, who looks thunderstruck. Tobias winks at him, but before Ethan can say anything, Tobias has swept past him and rejoins you and Harper. I can't believe you did that. You know me, always happy to provide a dramatic twist. Smiling, Tobias takes a seat, and for the first time you have an inkling of hope. Maybe things aren't dire, so aren't quite so dire. Suddenly the door opens and someone rushes down the aisle and approaches Ethan's lawyer. After a moment of whispering together, the attorney stands up. If it pleases the court, I'd like to request a short recess to consider new evidence. I'll allow a 30 minute recess. What does that even mean? Like, take a, I know it means take a break, but why do they call it a recess? Laura nods and touch and touching Ethan's shoulder gestures for him to allow to follow her. They walk down the aisle, then to your surprise, stop in front of you. Dr. Williams, if you wouldn't mind joining us for this meeting. Me? Uh, sure. You, Nathan and his attorney, are ushered into a small side room where you're surprised to see Naveen waiting, smiling pleasantly. Naveen, what are you doing here? Oh, come now, Ethan. You don't really think I'd miss a trial that's focused on something like that I did. The blood drains from Ethan's face, and he looks at you, a mixture of worry and ac ac accusation in his eyes. I told you, you shouldn't have said anything to him. I may have told him what happened, but I left it up to him to decide what to do about it. Ethan opens his mouth to answer, but is interrupted by the do door opening and Bloom walking in. All right, I got your message. What the heck is going on? Ah, good. You're right on time, Mr. Bloom. Now that we're all here, let me explain myself. Thanks to a very thoughtful young doctor, Anthony, I finally learned the full details of the case this morning. I was, however, upset at at how I had been kept in the dark, both the, both by you, Ethan, and by you, Mr. Bloom. I have no idea what you're talking about. Have I kept you in the dark? As chief and of medicine, of course. I know when a suit brought against this was brought against one of our doctors, I knew Ethan was under investigation. But somehow, all the information passed along, the, along to me regarding the the litigant, the nature of the evidence, all it was ink. Well, as a result, I actually thought it was different. It was a different case entirely. I wonder what, you know, how that could have happened. Clural mix-up, I imagine. Clural mix-up? You liar. You deliberately kept Naveen in the dark so he wouldn't, wouldn't step in to protect Ethan. That's despicable. I'm not sure what you're implying. Information gets misfiled in hospitals all the time. Admit it. You did it on purpose. I don't make a point admitting to things that aren't true. Perhaps you should take it up with my admin staff. At any at any rate, i when I found out which case it was and looked into it, I immediately realized how baseless it was. After all, I was attending I was the attending physician and Ethan was only was only a resident. Responsible the responsibility was ultimately mine. Veen, please don't. Oh, I think I will. Because the case is simply blurrier than that. The fact is that Ethan never ordered to contrain contradictate treatment. I did. What do you mean you ordered it? You made the error? That's right. I remember the circumstances of the case, and I remember that day very, very clearly. It was the day I finally acknowledged my drinking was affecting my job. The day I decided to get myself right, right before I hurt anyone else. I was lucky someone I care about very much helped 
may see the light before it was too late. I'm glad Naveen has intervened, but this is probably pretty rough on Ethan. Naveen. Ethan's face clouds with equal amounts of pain and affection. After a moment, he manages to tamp the emotion down, schooling his features into calm. That's all well and good, but I'd like to remind you of all that the case isn't against you, Naveen. It's against Ethan. Despite your verbal explanation, it's still Ill Ethan's signature on that chart, which makes it very hard to dispute. True, but of course, I'd like I'd be eth ethical remiss not to take this evidence to the plaintiff, which, of course, would likely scuttle the suit. More importantly, it would cause huge problems for Edenbrook and your stake in it, Mr. Bloom. What do you mean? If the hospital's chief of medicine revealed a scandal like this, drinking on the job, years of cover-up, subordinates lying for him, the blood book would irreparably damage Edinburgh. Then there would be holdouts for hospitals, blood studies, patients. This might go elsewhere. This might be... This might not be able to stay afloat, even with your fortune behind it, Mr. Bloom. The irony is priceless. You were so eager to rake Ethan over the coals, but the person who really is, who will really be screwed here is you, Bloom. Need I remind you that if Naveen does reveal this scandal, his good name would be it would be what takes the biggest hit. My name is no good for me, good to me. If I can't look myself in the mirror, and I'd say, I acted honorably and in, in any way. My sister was the only person whose opinion ever truly mattered to me, and I think she'd want me to tell the truth, no matter the cost. Bloom clears his throat, clearly wearing than before. So, what are you proposing? For stars, you'll settle this case out of court. A very large settlement, one that the patient can't possibly refuse. Is that all? Heavens no. I need your word you'll stop trying to influence medical practice at Edenbrook. Leave it to Ethan and the other doctors. Why would I agree to that? Naveen smiles at Bloom, and with his smile is sincere, friendly, even also triumphant. Because, look what happened when you decide to bankroll a case as a personal vendetta, Mr. Bloom. What are you talking about? An actual doctor would have noticed the inconsistencies in that chart before they undertook such an elaborate revenge. Not to mention, doctors known there's, there's know that residents have attending eyes on all their charts. Quite. A doctor would also have known that by pushing a patient to take things to court, it would risk far more than just one man's career. But then you're not a doctor, so of course you couldn't have known by yourself, could you? Boone Pales, you remember that moment in the courtroom seeing him talking to Pling if Ethan looks similar Thunderstruck lean over and whisper to him I can't believe it he's really willing to underwrite an entire lawsuit just to get rid of you I can't believe Bloom would ever sink that low yeah, I, I'd agree with you but it makes far, far too much sense. Bloom has gone white and rigid with anger, but he keeps his voice level and weighs his words carefully as he speaks to Naveen. Well, I believe you made your perspective clear. Anything else you see fit to? The situation will need to be explained to the hospital board. And as for myself... I believe the only honorable opinion for me and for the hospital is to offer my resignation.
Naveen, no. Naveen waves Ethan down with a single gesture, his usual smile back on his face as he continues speaking with Bloom. Still, I imagine it shouldn't be too much to find a new chief of medicine, as long as we keep this a private matter. The room grows quiet, Bloom's jaw tenses with anger, but he knows he's clearly beat. Fine, call in the patient and her lawyer. A few minutes later, everyone's back in the courtroom and the patient's attorney is standing to address the judge. Your Honor, the settlement agreement proposed by the defense is acceptable to my client. We hereby withdraw the malpractice suit. Very well. Case dismissed. Court is adjourned. The audience breaks into stunned chatter, but Tobias looks at you, eyes narrowed. Don't say anything. Fine. He and Harper file out along with the rest of the crowd. Only Ethan is left behind, sitting shocked at the defense table. You walk over and lay a hand on his shoulder. I, I don't think I ever felt so many conflicting emotions at once. At least you're cleared. That's something worth celebrating. It is. When Naveen had to take the fall instead, I'd never wanted this. Well, no one wanted this. I didn't want to see Naveen go down either, Ethan. But it was his choice, and he did what he felt he had to do. He shouldn't have had to do it. He should have been able to finish out his career at his own pace, with his good name intact. And he said to himself, it's not about his reputation or his good name. It's about looking at himself in the mirror. As much as we might not have, have hoped for an outcome like this, it's the it's an outcome that Naveen at peace with. I think we've we have to accept that. You sit you both sit in silence for a while before Ethan finally sighs heavily. I'd better head home. The world the whole world is about to change. The hospital and more more. I need to find a way to prepare myself for that. Sounds devastated. Shouldn't be alone right now. Will you be alright? He tries to smile, but it comes out slightly twisted. I always am, it seems. Just to know, Ethan, Naveen did this out of love. It was his gift to you. To give you. I hope you can find some comfort in that eventually. Find yourself tossing and turning again that night, Ethan's words ringing in your head. The whole world is about to change. He's right. For the hospital, for Naveen, for him, and for me too. Bargains will be coming back soon. I'll have to make a decision about what's next for me. But what's the right choice? Only, only the science of the night answers you. Ethan managed to survive his malpractice suit, but the hospital and your life will never be the same. Choose what next choose what's next for you for you in life and love life and love in the finale of Open Heart, which is on Friday. Okay. Let's get prepared for this. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're new to my channel. Share this with your friends. Comment below what you think of the video. If you want to get notified of any video I put up on my channel, hit the notification button next to the subscribe button. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye.